bending over to pick up a basketball, he kicked me so hard in my ass. I think his foot penetrated my ass. Like, I'm not even playing. He kicked, I flipped. I did a front, I'm like this, I'm bending over to get a, kick me in the ass. Bro, I did a front flip, and then he hit me with the basket, and I just, I was already mad, and I just snapped. He's lucky I didn't kill him. What up, I'm Rob Level, and I'm gonna tell you the story about how I went to the most screwed up school in America, and a crazy story that happened when I was inside of it. I have a lot of crazy stories about this place, but right now we're gonna, we're gonna talk about a place where the teachers would fight the students. The teachers would bet on which of the students was gonna win the fight, and then they let the students fight it out. The teachers would abuse us verbally and physically on a daily basis, and one time I was actually beat until I was purple, and I had the pictures to prove it. But I'm gonna tell that story in the next video. For now, let me introduce you to the school from hell. This is a screwed up true story from my life, right? But first, I wanna thank you for watching because I know that this video and these stories are gonna help a lot of people. But disclaimer, this story, as well as all the other stories, are pretty intense. So I'm sorry if it brings up any trauma for you like it does for me, okay? Uh, where should I start? Uh, let's talk about why I was put in this last chance behavior gang school in Southside Chicago where I'm from. Okay, just round this up before I get into the crazy story. It's all crazy, but uh, my aunt, who adopted me had just got kicked out of the army Whoa. because of my behavior problems, such as like breaking babysitter skulls open, oh, brick God. walls, um, running away from daycare centers, climbing on the roof, uh, breaking my teacher's leg in second grade. Basically, I mean, you kind of get, get the gist of it. Um, there's a lot of those stories and they really added up. After I got out of the live-in psychiatric wards that the therapist recommended that they put me in, my mom wanted me back because she thought, oh, he's better now, he's, he got out of those. By the end of the visit with my mom, she had put me in, in an insane asylum. Now my aunt was in the army, so that was the final straw for the army. And uh, she was my guardian after my, my dad died. So she had to come get me out of the mental hospital. But we were too poor, so she had to drive from Texas to Colorado to get me out. All right, now let's get into the story. That was kind of, you know, preface. But after we moved back to Southside Chicago, the only school that would accept me was this screwed up last chance behavior academy school called Park Forest Academy. And it's tattooed on me. And now this place closed in 2013, probably from stuff like I'm gonna tell you in this story uh, about, you know, how they beat the kids and it screwed up, right? That place was the biggest piece of shit I've ever had to live through, okay? Now, the normal teachers were 200 pounds at five foot tall, the females, right? And then um, they'd have teacher's aides to protect them from us filing students, but they all weighed 300 pounds and they're allowed to restrain you if you get out of line. So every day you walk in, you hit with metal detectors. They check you for guns and weapons so that you don't kill another student. And they also make sure that you're not wearing specific colors or wearing any specific logos that are affiliated with gangs because every student in the school was in a gang or was gang affiliated, 100%. I actually learned every single gang sign in Chicago because all these kids did all day was throw up gang signs at each other. They either threw them up or they threw other ones down. And it was so reoccurring that it was actually a 25 token fine in our token system, okay? By the way, we were on the token system and there's levels, which is stupid. Now what the worst possible thing out of all this was, was that I was actually, literally, the only white kid in that school. This was a school for the kids that were put into behavior classes in their mainstream schools. And then if you were kicked out of those classes, you were put into CAPS. Oh, and then if you were kicked out of CAPS, this was the last chance school that you got sent to. And no other school in the state would accept me because of my behavior. I was like 11 or 12 at five foot two, fat, full of emotional behavioral instability with white people mental issues and the biggest mouth, the biggest you've ever seen on somebody. Now, as you can probably guess, this screwed up combination didn't work out too well for me. No, sir, right? I would get my ass kicked constantly. And I'm talking, I would be fighting at least twice a week. At least. And I'm the type of person where even if you just kick my ass, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna talk more shit, okay? And then we're going at it again. And you know, that got a lot more fun when I got good at fighting because I could actually back that up. But at first, not so much. But this school was the worst because they didn't separate students based on grade level. No, the kids from seventh grade to 12th grade were in the same classroom. Huh? So this seventh grader was getting into fights with 17 or 18 year olds. So of course I was losing fights, they're twice my size. Now at this school, we used to get picked up on what the teacher's assistants always made fun of us for and referred to as the short bus. A short bus picks up mentally disabled kids if you've never heard the term. So basically calling us stupid. And it was like their little joke that they said to us all the time to demean us and feel better about their minimum wage teacher's assistant job that they had at 40 years old, which looking back at it now is, I guess it's the only thing they gave them power in life. These short buses were little white vans. 
Teachers' aides usually drove them to get that extra money, extra hours, and they'd come pick us up in front of our house every single day, right? It was actually against the rules to let your parent drive you to school unless you had a special reason. Why? Think about that. So school started as soon as you got on the bus. You were on the token system immediately, as soon as you got on there, right? Meaning any mess ups could affect your level and the tokens and the level of freedom that you had in this school. Just think tokens in a, in a school. You gotta be kidding, all right? So they came and they honked twice. And if you weren't on the bus, they're actually allowed to come physically get you and put you in the bus unless your parents said that you were allowed to stay home for the day. Yeah. You also got dropped back off at home by these vans. Very, very, very often, kids would argue and fight on the van. Then they'd hop off and they'd be fighting each other in front of somebody's house, right? They'd just be waiting for their stop and then they'd punch the person in the butt, then another person, they'd, I stand so many times. Someone's like, I could've got so many World Star videos out of that, right? All right, but back to the school now. Let's imagine this, right? There's no cafeteria. Huh? I can't eat! Right? We ate every single day inside of the classroom. We never even left. The food was ordered and it came in every day by truck in boxes. There were these little six inch by four inch aluminum containers with a white lid. And that, that was our lunch. Every day, we had no choice. It was just set for you. And the food tasted like garbage, except for the lasagna, like which was delicious. But seriously, the homeless shelter I lived in after high school had better food. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. I'm not kidding you. I got kicked out of that homeless shelter, by the way. I got banned from it. That's a story for another time, but um, it was really below average for schoolwork. I received the same exact schoolwork every year from seventh grade to 10th grade. Sophomore year, I told my aunt and uncle that I felt like I was stupid because I've done this work year after year. I mean, sure, it's great getting all A's, but by the third year of getting the same schoolwork, I just felt like an idiot. I mean, it was literally, literally the same school worksheets, the same worksheets every year. And remember, my classroom was seventh through 12th graders. All the same work for these grades. Now that tells you something about how this school operated. Now, before I hit puberty at like 15 and a half, I was super fat and I used to get called fat so much because I was getting picked on in some way, shape or form that I was bulimic for like six months. That's another story I'm gonna tell you guys to help anybody who has any body image issues. So here's some other side notes about Park Forest Academy and my adventures there, all right? I was the only white kid 99% of the time that I was there. Oh, right? Some kids got transferred in or out. Uh, some white kids, they usually go out because they couldn't handle their first or second ass whooping and then they didn't come back. Since I was the only white kid, they were forced to let me play on the sports teams. Everything from soccer, basketball, football, you name it, I played it. And the reason being is it got me out of a very boring eight hour day in the same classroom doing the same work. I broke a kid named Javante's ribs with a pool stick, the big end of it. Um, seven kids jumped me and beat my ass one time. That was brutal. That was brutal. Um, there was a senior, right? And he was uh, like 6'4". His name was Reggie. I broke his leg during a basketball game. He took the basketball and threw it at my face full force. And my, my face was just no bleeding. I kicked the back of his leg in and I was on top of him. And all this is, all my blood, seriously, it's kind of nasty, but all my blood, I was spitting the blood out of my mouth into his face and into his mouth. Ew. And I was just in this like furious rage. No, he didn't only throw the basketball at me. Before that, he kicked me, I was bending over to pick up a basketball, he kicked me so hard in my ass, I think his foot penetrated my ass. Like, I'm not even playing, He kicked, I flipped. I did a front, I'm like this, I'm bending over to get a, kick me in the ass, bro. I did a front flip and then he hit me with the basket and I just, I was already mad and I just snapped. He's lucky I didn't kill him. I have a ton of these stories, uh, but I don't think this is actually gonna help the overall picture of the story. I have way more crazy stories to tell you. We're just getting started. All right. But um, I'm gonna put a link to those below this video, but I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. And if you could do me a favor, please share your painful, your joyful stories, opinions, and thoughts about my story below in the comments. What? You never know who's gonna read what you say. You never know who it's gonna help in the future because I'm really promoting these videos to millions and millions and millions of people. So they can really help people. So if you have a second, please go to the comments, leave one, or Read other people's stories and talk to them. Give them advice from your story. Let them know that somebody else out there does care because not everybody has somebody like, you know? And I'd also love to know what you're dealing with in your life too. If you're struggling with anything, write it out below. No one's judging you, right? I'm in these comments. I'm responding to people. You'll see that below. And I'm deleting people who leave any type of trollish comments, all right? So it's a safe place. One last thing, please like this video and subscribe because it'll really help this video organically move so they can motivate and inspire more people because that's how the YouTube algorithm works. Do if you want to see the next part of my screwed up story or see any of the other crazy stories, I put links to all of my crazy stories that were part of my life story song all below. They're titled, you're gonna wanna see every single one of them. They're all crazy. All right, these are the craziest ones below this video. Right. So I'll also put them here, the ones that I recommend. I'll put them on the screen right here for you so you can check those out while my song plays that fits this story in the background. I'm Rob Level. Follow me on Instagram, Rob underscore Level. Keep hustling, keep believing in yourself. 
and I'll see you at the top. Seconds later, I get this call. Rob, we gotta get you out of here. We got, we gotta get you out of here. Where are you, man? I'm coming to get you. Uh, stay away from the spot. They just picked them up. They got, they got, they got them right now. I instantly knew what would happen. DEA came and they ripped apart the entire place. Five, saving to survive. Pay the bills and put a little to the side.